sketch the character of Blanche Du Bois. Marks 10 to 12. Answer. Blanche Du Bois is perhaps the most disturbing character penned by Tennessee Williams. In the Pulitzer-winning play, A Streetcar Named Desire, Blanche appears in the first scene dressed in white, the symbol of purity and innocence. She is delicate, refined, and sensitive. But the irony is that she is already a fallen woman in society's eyes. Blanche's family, fortune and estate are all gone. She has lost her young husband to suicide years earlier. Racked by guilt, she firmly believes that she drove her husband to become a gay and eventually kill himself out of shame. In order to prove her femininity and sexuality to herself, she has had many intimacies with strangers. As Blanche is without anyone to hold on to, she has gone from man to man hunting for some protection or to pay for one night's shelter. She has been even thrown out of her hometown as a woman of loose morals after being caught up in making advances on one of her students. In a nutshell, she is a social pariah due to her indiscreet sexual behavior. She also has a bad drinking problem, which she covers up poorly. As a poetry teacher, Blanche perhaps loves to live in a fantasy world of romance, love, sex, and alcohol. Blanche arrives in New Orleans to stay with her sister Stella and her brother-in-law Stanley Kowalski. In their household, Blanche pretends to be a woman who has never known indignity. She appears cultured and intelligent who can't stand a vulgar remark or a vulgar action. But behind her veneer of social snobbery and sexual property, Blanche is an insecure dislocated woman. She is an aging southern belle who lives in a state of perpetual panic about her fading beauty. Her manner is dainty and frail, and she sports a wardrobe of showy but cheap evening clothes. Stanley quickly sees through Blanche's act and seeks out information about her past. Blanche makes a calculated attempt to make herself appear attractive to new male suitors. She depends on male sexual admiration for her sense of self-esteem, which means that she has often succumbed to passion. By remarrying someone, she hopes to escape poverty and the bad reputation that haunts her. But as Blanche sees it, Mitch is her only chance for contentment, even though he is far from her ideal. Stanley's relentless persecution of Blanche foils her pursuit of Mitch as well as her attempts to shield herself from the harsh truth of her situation. The play chronicles the subsequent crumbling of Blanche's self-image and sanity. Stanley himself takes the final stabs on Blanche, destroying the remainder of her sexual and mental esteem by raping her and then committing her to an insane asylum. It comes as no surprise that she and Stanley have had this date with each other from the beginning. Even when Stanley tries to interfere with her, instead of running away she moves backwards. Into the bedroom almost as if to lead Stanley to the bed. In the final scene, Blanche allows herself to be led away by a kind doctor, ignoring her sister's cries. This final image is the sad culmination of Blanche's vanity and total dependence upon men for happiness. Blanche seemingly acquiesces as she loses all contact with reality, addressing the doctor with the most famous line in the play, I have always depended on the kindness of strangers. Finished. Please subscribe to the channel for more updates of ready-made notes on English literature. Also, Please share this channel to help any student pursue a degree in English literature. Please do not forget to subscribe, like and comment.